Hey everybody, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I'm going to do a video today um, in which I attempt to frame something in a very cool way, a way that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I will show you how I'm doing it. And if I have some serious pratfalls, then you will see where those possibilities are. But hopefully I will pull this off without too much trouble and maybe tack even a second example on the back of this video. So I don't know if you guys have been following, but my daughter Jocelyn did this beautiful folk cat drawing and um, dictated you know which yarns that I needed to do to complete it so now I have completed it and it's about um, eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter so not quite a square should have had the foresight to make it into a square but it is what it is so the supplies that I'm using here unrelated there the supplies that I'm using here are um, my piece and I've ironed it I've blocked it so I've applied heat with the iron not too too much this is all yarn uh, and it's all wool so it's fine but I, I like the way it is kind of standing and I think it has a good effect so I blocked it to the extent that I want it blocked this particular piece and then I have a block I have a piece of wood uh, Jay cut this for me on a power saw and it's hardwood it's a piece of an old dresser that was junk outside so we just used it for this but of course if you wanted to use a different material as your backing piece um, just to fast forward so you know where I'm headed I'm going to be stapling this around and tucking the sides back if you wanted to use a different piece as your backing piece some of the things I thought about that made sense to use I remember in one of my houses I had cork floor tiles they are remarkably expensive, but they are nice and light. And of course, nails go into them and staples go into them nicely. One of the things I'm worried about with this piece of hardwood is getting my staple guns to go in it. Uh, my staples, when I use my staple gun. In other words, when I staple in a minute, will the staple go into this hardwood? Or is it going to ricochet off the wood, go into my throat or my eyeball or something like that? I do have glasses on, but... I've had machine needles break and go into my eyeball even with glasses on. Incredible the way that uh, angles work. I should play more pinball or something and figure that out a bit better. Or ask my kids who are so good at video games. But anyway, I'm hoping that this piece of hardwood is going to be okay. So I've got my back. I've got my piece. I've got my staple gun. I've got some nails. I've got a bunch of crazy nails that were in hall closet nails, I call them. Just, you know, who knows what's in there. There's probably no two alike. It's like um, potluck but they're nails. And then I have my hammer and Jocelyn's hammer. We'll see if this is a two hammer job. We're about to find out. And then the piece de resistance, as I see it, are these pieces of yardstick, right? So I've been collecting yardsticks lately because I sometimes see them in antique stores and junk stores. And I love them in neon, right? I mean, it's so cool. These these all came from a folding yardstick, so it was folded into threes. So I had 12, 12, 12. Um, and Jay also cut them off at the strategic points with the power saw, but this is definitely something you could do with a miter saw, meaning a box saw, right? Anybody could do that. Um, most I shouldn't say anybody. Most people can do that. Even I can use a miter saw, but I didn't have to today, thank goodness. So... I found some pieces of yardstick. Now there's really pretty old ones, right? Like the nice wooden ones that say nice things on them. Um, and then there's this, the neon ones that were very popular later. Pinks, light blue, lemon yellow, uh, pistachio, ice cream colors. So if you're looking to do this project and you're looking at, for example, Facebook Marketplace, yardsticks, look under yardsticks or folding ruler or advertising ruler. That's an important keyword, advertising ruler, because all of these, um, I think we got these in Rhode Island. This is this was in a company that was in Warwick, Rhode Island. I'm from Rhode Island, that's Rhode Island area code. So anything that says Rhode Island or Cape Cod or places that are dear to my heart are things that I like to pick up and see. So what I'm going to attempt to do, and say a little prayer for me, um, I'm going to attempt to staple this around here first, and, and I have high hopes that the staple gun is going to do it. When you are measuring something like this, this is eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter, eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And the bottom piece needs to be a hair bigger. You can't, uh, you need to stretch it a tiny bit. So let's see, this is the fiddly part, and you know how much I like fiddly stuff, which is not at all. Um, I think the best way to go about this, say a little prayer. Okay, yep, we're good, we're golden, is to put one in the center as a placeholder. 
So now I'm going to come around the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. Feel for your corners, corner to corner. Yep. And let's see how this goes. I want it pretty taut because I don't want this puffing out in the center. So I think I got the sides pretty secure. I feel like this is going, I'm not going to say it. You know, I'm not going to say it because as soon as I say it. So let me get this one here. And this one, I'm pulling a little bit and that's, that's what I want. I want to pull it a little bit. I want the last row of loops to really reach um, the edges of the ruler and hide, hide in there. I might have to take the other one out. I might have pulled too hard. But maybe not. Mung's cloth wants to give. The Mung's cloth wants to cooperate. So I've got one staple in each side right now. Now for the tricky part. So let me go one more staple over. For S's and G's, let's just do some more placeholders. One more staple over on each side. And then we're going to worry about mitering corners. Mitering corners, of course, if you're a sewer, quilter, uh, is when you deal with the extra bulk in the corner uh, so that it doesn't plague you um, with its bulk. So here we go. I got two on each side of now four sides here. There we go. This is working out just fine. All right. So, so far, so good. This is where we're at. Boop, ba doop, right? Looking good. God, Jocelyn's a great artist, isn't she? Give her a little thumbs up or a comment on this video or on her video. She is just such a six-year-old. It's crazy. If only she'd sleep and eat normal food. All right, so I'm going to trim down some of this. You know, I don't know even that I need to trim it down. Yeah, why not? I'll trim it down a little bit. You know what? Do I want to trim it down? Yeah, I'll trim it down a little bit. We'll trim it down just a little bit and then we'll have a I'm going to tidy up the back too. I'm not I'm not particularly worried about the back. This is going to be one of my sloppy messipes here. Um but I can fix the back later if I want to. Let's see. So, now I want to figure out a way that is going to be the best to get this tight and tucked at the same time. I'm actually going to do this with my fingers. And thank goodness there's only four corners, right? Thank goodness a rectangle only has four corners. I'm half joking. All right. I like it like that. So let's see how much finger and how much cloth get involved in this one. Close your eyes. Ah, oh, did it. Okay. So that's all right. Hey, that worked. Look, there are five of them still. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's too close to Halloween for those kinds of jokes. All right. Now let's see. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling, tucking as I go. I just want it out of the way. Um, let's see. Oh, I did it again. Did I scare you? That actually looks great. Look at how nice and crisp that's looking. Looks like a proper canvas, doesn't it? So far. All right, so let's see. Tuck and pull again can see a little bit of bulk under there. I want zero bulk. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trim this down a little bit too because this is like a little fringe flying like a flag in the face of my efforts here. And I know it's going to cause me some grief and aggravation later. All right, let's see. I love to say grief and aggravation because in the years when I used to be a bus tour guide, I always worked with this guy called Norm and I love him so much. He was an older guy. And um, he always used to say grief and aggravation. You know, people were giving us grief and aggravation like it was one word. And uh, he was a Vermonter, a real old time Yankee. What a great guy. He's still doing well way up in the north of Vermont, Lamoille County. And I'm really hoping to take a road trip to see him in the next month or so. I don't like to not see my buddies for so long. Only person I've ever known who put maple syrup on his breakfast cereal and I got on his case about it every single day because we kept having to buy new shirts for him because his buttons popped and that doesn't look good in front of your tour group. So this looks all right. There's no button popping going on here. This looks all right. So let me get rid of our little bits and pieces. We just want to see prettiness here. 
Um, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to worry about the, the fringe and stuff later. I want to show you the concept of what I'm doing here. I've got four pieces, and like I said, we pre-cut them. These, obviously, are the two sides, and these are the top and bottom, which are longer. Um, I had Jay cut them, like, in a log cabin pattern, which means, like, ignore. Let's go to another page. We'll just ignore that. This is my quick thoughts thing. Log cabin is when, if you have your frame like this, right, I'm exaggerating here. It's a it's a quilting term, log cabin. Oh, I'm right in the light, aren't I? Let me put the overhead on. All right. So log cabin is when it starts flush on one side and it goes a little bit over, right? I'm exaggerating. And then this side starts here and goes a little bit over. And then this one starts here and goes a little bit over. And yeah, so this one would have started over. Pig's breakfast, that one would have started over. So in other words, it's like this, right? So that each each one overhangs, um, it's flush on one side and overhangs the other side. And I just think that looks neater. The other alternative would be two the exact same size and two the exact same size. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do like this. So let's see what we got. My hope is to, See, now this, when I went like this with my ruler, I could see a little tiny bit of white here. If you are not a well person, kind of like I am not a well person, that will drive you crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little bit harder. I'm going to put you on pause. There we go. I didn't like that unnatural light. It drives me nuts. I feel like a reverse vampire or something. I'm just going to pull a little bit. I tried to give you a bit more sunlight from the other window. Let's see. It's going to pull a little harder in between. You know I'm going to run out of staples, like one staple short, right? Because that's just the way it is. And then I'm going to drive over to staples. Staples is going to be like, uh, yeah, we're out of staples, which has actually happened to me. And then I'm going to go to Home Depot, and they're going to say, oh, you know, we have 999 types of staples, but not the ones you need. Um, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Remember last time I got my staples at Joann's, uh, and that worked well because they only had them in two sizes. There wasn't a lot of room for error. Just want to show you again what this is looking like. So let's say we start with this one. I'm going to want them to be face up like that, right? You're probably not going to see this on the top of the piece on the wall, but I want it. I want to start right. There's no reason not to. Looks like this is my starting piece, actually. This one overhangs the most. So what I would like to do in a perfect world is line this up flush, which I'm doing with my fingers. And let's see, flush on this side right over here. Let's see if I can nail it in. Ready for some fun? I'm going to try to, I have a tiny nail, right? I'm going to deal with the back later. I'm just creating the frame for now and I want it you know I have choices here because my ruler is a little bit thicker than the piece so I have choices do I want do I want it flush against the back and overhanging to make a little bit of a shadow box effect here in the front or do I want to push it back a little bit so it's flush in the front I prefer having the shadow box effect but that is a design choice and that is your choice so I'm feeling with my fingers for information about where lines are and this looks good so I'm gonna choose I, again I'm gonna start in the middle because uh, I feel like I have my best chance for success and I'm gonna attempt to nail into one of the dark parts dark D-A-R-K okay let's leave that as a placeholder so this is gonna spin a little on its axis there so feels good still feels good except I hope I have enough overhang space here. So you have to be thinking, no, it doesn't look like it overhangs enough. So I'm gonna pull that out. You have to be thinking one step ahead um, to save yourself grief and aggravation norm. All right, so I'm pushing this over here. You can't really save yourself grief and aggravation in this world, can you? I don't know a single person who's been successful in that department. So I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna put that back in its little hole. Now, these are not hefty little rulers, are they? Um, you don't have to use gigantic, crazy nails, right? This is going to work just fine. So this should be all right. 
one of the things I'm realizing is with the bulk being there, I'm going to have trouble um, cleaning up the back later. So what I'm going to do, this is the figure it out as you go hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off some extra at the corners. I'm going to clean all of this up later. But since my staples have thus lasted, I'm going to do some tucking and some seriously tight pulling here because I want that next piece to be tight. Okay, we'll clean up this part later. Truly we will. I'm just going to tuck, getting it out of our eyesight. can hear the children yelling, where are you, Dad? At the store, and of course I'm upstairs like I told them I would be a thousand times. Doesn't sound like anyone's head is hanging on by a thread though, so I think we're okay. So I'm gonna attempt to put this one here. Now, if you can see that real clearly, that's pretty flush at this corner. When that's tight in there, that is gonna look real nice. So I'm gonna tidy up the other bits later. I'm gonna put, you know what, no, I'm gonna do this one now, cause this, this is good, this is in a good position. So let's get another little nail in here, another little smallie, and let's choose, let's choose a small one. Um, let's choose a far down spot where the, it won't really show again. I don't want extra holes on the ruler, you know, it's the text is what makes it for me special. I wanna see what it says. If ever I, you know, if I grow another six feet and I'm ever looking down on the frame. Now putting these nails in is going to help you flatten out your sides, right? There's, it's going to be very hard for the monk's cloth to fight you there. That, that is holding it down real well. And now this one should go on just like this. And I might want to put one more toward the back, but let's see what we end up with. I'm going to attach this one here as close to there as I can. And I can feel with my fingers, it should be all right around the other side too. So let's see if I can get this flush. Get this little guy here. Let's see. Ooh, it's hard. It's tight. I might need to push as I go. You know what? I'm going to put one more here. You've got to feel as you go. You want to get all your points down. So I am adding a nail back here. I just want this back to lay real flat. Now, get this one in here. I'm going to put this one on the dot. Let's see what happens. Ooh, moved. It shifted a hair. And I got the diagonal nail thing going on, but you know what? Been there before and hasn't defeated me yet. So it's going well. You can see where I'm going with this project. I'm going to secure this one further down too. This pink one on the top is looking good. I can see there's a little bit of an excess space right here. My little gap or lip for this next piece to hug real tight, which it will. And then my last piece is going to go like this. And that should work great. So I'm not going to force you to watch all of this. I'm going to do it off camera, but man, don't those neon rulers really pop this? And neon rulers, you know, no folding rulers or yardsticks are super cheap because people collect them, particularly the advertising ones. But look out for them. You will find them at yard sales in unexpected places. I got mine for, um, I think, $8 for the folding yardstick. It just seemed like a lot for a yardstick, but it came with three different neon colors. So these three, and then this was the second yardstick I bought off eBay and we cut up. So, uh, you know, the folding yardstick made three out of the four sides, but what a fun thing to look for advertising yardsticks. And again, look at Facebook Marketplace and eBay. Those are gonna be your two best bets. I'm gonna work on this little guy for a while. I've yet to come up with a name with, for him. Let me ask Jocelyn, cause I'm sure she'll come up with something um, that makes you laugh. And I'll be back to you with a finished frame here. So I made plenty of mistakes and I can tell you about them so you don't make the same mistakes. What I should have done with cutting the yardsticks was give them even more length. Because as you can see, once you have, and, and how did I not think of this, you know, being a grown up and having years of experience messing stuff up, um, by the time you put your fabric in there, and I even cut it back a little bit more, but no matter how flat you get that fabric, it's still gonna count for something. So I should have given 
a, like another one eighth at the corners because my corners don't quite meet. This corner does, this corner does, but these two don't. So it is what it is. Can I sleep at night? Well, I can't sleep at night anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. Let me just shut that fan off. But um, I like the way it looks. I like the way the sides look. I think it looks colorful. I think it's appropriate for like a nice sort of juvenile piece of artwork like Jocelyn did me here. And uh, I still have to get that cat's name. So the back I haven't finished yet. I'm going to trim it down. You could glue it down or whatever. I could even add more. I'll probably add a few more nails even to make it more secure. But I want to show you with a flat back like this. I measured my back and I put a center point um, where the middle middle will be. And you know, if you get these little sawtooth guys from the hardware store, they have a hole on each side and they sit like this on a nail. You put the sawtooth down, you probably know this, but they sit on a nail. So all you need to do is center them and, oops, get the nail in the right place. It's a tiny little nail. Only consideration here is make sure your nail is not big enough to go through your board and puncture the front of your piece. Can you imagine? Good times. It's definitely hard wood. It's easier going into the side of it than the back of it. Just checking. Oh, and you know what? It was too small to even do that with. So that, that has some irritation factor. I'm going to get another one. And we're going to do this. And if I can't get one that's going to go through here and, and not be too long to go um, to not pierce the front of my piece, then I'm just going to super glue it because I've done that many times. It's not that heavy of a piece. It's not even a pound, even with the wood and all. Maybe it's one pound, but not, not much more. So if I can't find the right piece, I will certainly glue this. I'm not going to take any chances of puncturing the front. I'm going to go rootle around for some more nails. Go. Welcome back. This is the ending. And... We have finished our piece. Yep. And I decided to name him Jelly Sandwich. Jelly Sandwich. Or Jam Sandwich. Or Jam. I like Jelly Sandwich. What do you think? So this is our, see it didn't come out exactly perfect here. I would have done it differently. Um, that part's pretty perfect, but it's got its rulers on all four sides. What do you think of that frame, Joss? I think it's beautiful. It's cool. It's four different colors. And um, it's got like the neon peach, the neon pink, the lemon pink, and the like pencil yellow. There's like two slight different kinds of yellow and two slight different kinds of pink. Yeah. Kind of. What do you think of Jelly Sandwich? I'm going to call him Jam Sandwich. I feel like that sounds better. Okay, let's call him Jam Sandwich. There's definitely some um, alliteration going on there. Or I can, or whatever it is. His whiskers don't look as good as I predicted, but they okay. still look pretty good. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't they mean... look better on camera. Okay. <laughs> Literally. So I could have done the whiskers a bit better. So let's just show them what it looks like on the back. I glued this thing on about two minutes ago. I trimmed it down a little bit, but I glued that guy down. I couldn't find nails that would work, and I didn't want it to rip through the front, so I glued it. You know, super glue is it's pretty strong. Yeah. So what do you say, Joss? You and Jelly and Jam Sandwich. I think you're now nine. I think this is going to be one of the first times in your life when there's a piece of your artwork hanging on a wall and people looking at it. I think there's going to be a lot of those times in the future. Yes. Doesn't that look good? Yes. Okay, let's say bye to our viewers. Bye, viewers. Make sure to buy the, the cat design. Okay, I'll put it in the store. I'll put the cat design in the store. Bye, viewers. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and a comment or subscribe. Like. Thumbs up. Any, we'll take anything. <laughs> See you next time.